Welcome to our service of morning prayer on the 26th Ordinary Sunday of the Church Year. Open our lips, O Lord, and we shall declare your praise. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Friends in Christ, we have come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of God's Church. We will lift up our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's Holy Word and pray for this world and for ourselves. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered far from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us, wipe out our sins, and teach us to forgive others. 
Bring forth in us the fruit of your Spirit, that we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Grace and peace be with you. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to, God. to God. Psalm 78. Give heed to my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. For I will open my mouth in a parable and expound the mysteries of former times. What we have heard and known, what our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children, but declare to a generation yet to come the praiseworthy acts of the Lord for his mighty and wonderful works. For he did marvellous things in the sight of their ancestors, in the land of Egypt, in the country of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up in a heap. In the daytime he led them with a cloud, and all night long with the light of fire. He cleft rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink in abundance, as from springs of water. He brought streams out of the rock and caused the waters to flow down like rivers. But for all this, they sinned yet more against him and rebelled against the Most High in the desert. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. 
John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Then he said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can never read today's Gospel reading without getting a shiver down my spine. It's not that the story is so powerful, even though it is a good story which makes an important point. Rather, this reading takes me back to the first time I preached on this text as a theological student. As a student, I was assigned to Holy Trinity East Melbourne to work on a Sunday basis. I was very lucky to work with a very fine priest and later bishop, Gerald Beaumont, probably well known to many of you. It was my turn to preach, and today's reading was the text for the day. The only problem was that I got the whole story the wrong way round. As I read it, I thought that Matthew was telling his readers it was the son who said he would go, but then did not, that was the better son. Now I wonder how I ever argued that point. Perhaps I had confused my calling to priesthood with one with a calling to be a lawyer instead. If I recall rightly, I argued my point by saying that what God wants from us is our immediate response, the immediate obedience that the kingdom had to be declared as quickly as possible. I must admit, as I think about it now, it was a tortuous sermon to listen to, and I can remember it was very difficult to write. 
I should also say that after this sermon, Gerald came to me to congratulate me on successfully arguing against the gospel and its message from the pulpit. He followed this by saying I had to preach the same text again in two weeks' time and get it right this time, a lesson I have never forgotten. My understanding of this text is now much more in line with what Jesus wants us to believe. And I would now like to go through the text with you so that we can read together the message to the church. The setting of today's Gospel reading, even though the lectionary cuts out much of it, is in Jerusalem. And Jesus is speaking to the chief priests and elders of the people. This passage follows directly from Jesus' cleansing of the temple. This is a crisis point in Jesus' ministry. In Jerusalem, he runs head-on into conflict with all the authorities of established religion. And in today's reading, we hear him forced, forcing them to make a judgment against themselves. To this point, he tells them the story of the two sons, one of whom, he says, will not work in the vineyard, but eventually does, and the other who promises to, but then fails in his duty. This story, like so many told by Jesus, has a real sting in its tail. He asks his critical listeners, which of the two sons did his father's will? They rightly choose the, the former son as the one who did the father's will. But Jesus has led his listeners into a trap because they are now confronted with their own failings though they had been hoping to bring Jesus down. Clearly, it is not mouthing the right words and going through rituals that the Father wants. God wants action, not empty words. Jesus then further confronts his listeners by pointing out that John the Baptist had come before and they had not listened to him. Rather, it was the prostitutes and tax collectors they considered, uh, those considered to be the lowest of the low in Israel who had listened to him. The religious and political authorities, instead of listening to John, had conspired in the plot to have him killed. Jesus, in the passage, is attacking the so-called religious people who go through the motion of being God-directed people, mouthing the right words and performing the right rituals, but not putting their lives where their words are. In the Western world, Christian standards over the years have become or had become the accepted values of society. But in our rapidly changing and increasingly secular world, they no longer play this role in society at large. Some of our political leaders, however, are very happy to be seen worshipping in their church, being interviewed after having attended church, or allowing themselves to be surrounded by church leaders who have purportedly been praying for them. Of course, there is also a certain political leader who made a big effort to be filmed standing outside a church waving a Bible. But it is only through lives well lived, honest and focused on caring for the poorest in society and the world that will speak to a society in danger of losing its soul. Christianity can best give evidence of the kingdom through action, not through posturing and Bible waving. This does nothing but destroy the credibility of the scriptures and the credibility of the church. If we churchgoers who listen to the gospel are not doing what we are saying, 
What hope is there for the church and for the faith? It is a challenge to all of us every single day to live truly Christian lives, lives which will at times be a foil to those around us. It is particularly important that our lives always reflect our faith and that we remain true to the precepts of our faith even though they may at times be considered foolish to those around us. Before God, honesty, compassion, integrity and respect of others is never foolish. The Lord be with you. Let us now affirm the faith of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also, let us join together in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be exalted, Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory cover the earth. Keep our nation under your care and guide us in justice and truth. Let your way be known on earth your saving power among all nations. Send out your light and your truth, that we may tell of your saving works. Have mercy on the poor and oppressed. Hear the cry of those in need. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for we put our trust in you. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may have that mind which was in Christ Jesus, who emptied himself and took the form of a servant and in humility became obedient even to death. For you have highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in everlasting glory. Amen. Let us now pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. God of grace, you took the form of a servant and came to dwell among the poor and oppressed. Hear our prayers for your world and for your church. We pray for the peoples of the world, for all whose lives are filled with misery and degradation for those in places of oppression, civil war, and unrest. When we are greedy and wasteful in our use of resources, when we allow others to be exploited for our gain, work your will in us that we may grow into your likeness. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your worldwide church, for church leaders and all who commit their lives to your service, for those in this parish who minister here in your name. 
We pray at this time for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. We remember the Diocese of Gippsland, praying especially for their Bishop Richard. We pray for Furbank Grammar School. We remember the people of All Saints Kuyong. And we pray, as always, for our own Archbishop, Philip, and for our regional bishop, Geneve. When we are slow to believe or trust in you, when we do not honour our promises or, or do your will, work your will in us that we may grow into your likeness. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those with whom our lives are bound, for our neighbours and those with whom we work or play, for our families and all whose love and care sustains our lives. We particularly pray for those in our community in special need at this time, for those who are unemployed, those struggling with sickness, particularly with the coronavirus. We pray for all our political leaders praying especially for our Premier, for our Prime Minister, and for all who work for our protection. When we are rude and arrogant in our dealings with others, when we are indifferent to the welfare of the poor and disadvantaged, work your will in us that we may grow into your likeness. God of grace, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray at this time for all in trouble or distress, for the lonely and unwanted, the sad and sorrowing, for the frightened and despairing, the sick and the dying. And we remember at this time Harry, Jensen and Alan, Joy and Noreen, Christine, Neil and Trisha, Kathy, Jackie, Leone, Sam and family, Martin, Colin, Heather, and any others that we may wish to name in our hearts. When we are too foolish to open our hearts to others who are in need, when we are too proud to accept the help that others offer to us, Work your will in us that we may grow into your likeness. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died in your love, for those of every age and place who have loved and served you. And we particularly remember at this time Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who made such a big impression in her own country and changed the lives of many for the better and also not only in her own country but around the world fighting for minorities fighting for the poor for the disenfranchised and living in many ways to the values of today's gospel for those dear to us and for those of this parish who have gone before us as we remember Frances Hartshorn, Damon O'Keefe, Vera Detman, Jean Austin, Elizabeth Caldicutt, Ted Gill, Effie Taylor, Margaret Maher. Work your will in us that we may grow into your likeness and when our earthly days are done, bring us to the joyful resurrection that we with all your saints, may live forever in your presence. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us grace to agree in these our prayers, and you have promised that when two or three gather in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers, as may be best for us. Grant us in this life the knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life eternal. Amen. 
Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We conclude this time of prayer together with the words of the grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
Thank you.